Hello, this review is to help you with the air test for Algebra 1. And this is a practice test, and so we're going to go through the practice test in a minute. But before we go through the practice test, I would like to talk about a couple of things. Basically, you need to understand the difference between three kinds of functions. So the first kind of function that you learn about in algebra is linear functions. So linear functions make lines, like y equals mx plus b. M, of course, is the slope, and B is the y-intercept. So basically, what you need to understand is that you have a graph here, and you have the y-intercept, which is your B. It's your, also, it's your starting point. It's where something starts, and then your change is the slope. So like uh, up and over, up and over, up and over. But the B is where you start and the M is the staircase that which you travel. So that's that's the things about linear. Um, also the slope formula is you, you take the difference of the Y values over the difference and the and the X values. So it's about how the Y changes versus the X. That's what we talk about going up and over, up and over. So if you have Y is equal to one third X plus two, you would start at two, one, two, and then a slope of one third. So you go up one over three. And this is just an estimate, up one over three. So there we go. But the main thing is this is this is where you start, is right here, and then the slope is how you travel. Okay, but you have to apply this information, so they may say something like this: two five x plus fifty. So the story problem could be something like, hey, it costs fifty dollars to show up to your house. Uh, to service your dishwasher or something like that. So this would be the, the startup or the, uh, fixed, the fixed fee or whatever. Sometimes they call it fixed, your fixed fee. So it costs $50 to show up to your house and then, they, and then your rate is like $25 uh, per hour to fix something. Um, I actually had a, uh, somebody come to my house to work on something and they, it was like $75 uh, to show up to the house. It was like a phone situation, like a phone line people. And then it was um, $25 every 15 minutes or $100 an hour to do the repair. So you have a starting amount or a fixed fee and then a slope. So it can look as simple as this or it can have a money application to it. So this is, this is linear. Um, the next thing, the next kind of equation that you have to deal with is quadratic. So quadratic equations uh, come in the form y equals ax uh, squared, whoops, ax squared plus bx plus c. So there's a 2 right there. So instead of being x to the first power, it's x to the uh, second power. So what are the important things with this? Well, this makes a parabola, and the vertex of the parabola, the x-coordinate of the vertex, is the point where it turns, which is negative b over 2a. So that would be like like that. So that vertex is the, the bottom point. Or if the parabola is upside down, the vertex is the top point. So you can have, this would be um, a minimum value because it's low, and there'd be a maximum value because it's high. But the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Um, sometimes if you have the parabola in y is equal to um, uh, ax minus h squared plus k, then uh, the h and k is also the vertex. So it moved so many spaces to the right or left and then up so many spaces. So the h and k is also the vertex. And then finally, um, the quadratic formula solves every quadratic, a negative b plus or minus the square root a b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So if you plug in the a, the b, and the c into the formula here, it solves the equation for you. Um, also, factoring is a way to solve quadratics, completing the square, but mostly factoring in the quadratic formula. Um, factoring, if you remember, is like you have x plus 6, x plus 8 is equal to 0, and then you factor it and set your factors equal to 0 x plus 4 and then 
you can uh, set each one of these equal to zero and you get x equals negative two and x is equal to negative four. So you get your two solutions from your quadratic. So that would be factoring, you got the quadratic formula. So some of these things will be demonstrated when we go through the problems. And then the last kind of problem that you have to deal with are um, uh, exponential. So exponential is for multiplying numbers um, over and over again. So y is equal to a uh, b to the x. That's your typical exponential formula. The a is your starting point, and then this is your stopping point, and then this is your growth rate or decay, and then this would be the number of times that you're doing the growth um, number of times that you're doing the growth or decay so like three days or eight months or two years or whatever so it's how many times the the decay is happening um, so let's see if we have um, 25 bacteria in a petri dish or something like that and it has a eight percent growth rate and then we would say okay i'm eight percent more how many times times 25 would give you the final amount so exponential functions curve like this or they'll curve the other way if they're if it's going down decreasing so growth is obviously going up and the decay is obviously going down so exponential growth or decay and you can tell growth or decay based on b um, when b is positive like this that would be eight uh, percent growth so B is not, not positive so much, but greater than one. So when B is greater than one, it's, it's growth, 8% more. And then if B was equal to 0 0.97, that would be like a 3% uh, decay. All right. So I'm going through these things pretty quickly, um, hopefully. I mean, that was like all of the highlights of Algebra 1 in, uh, in literally uh, seven minutes. So um, linear changes to make a straight line. Quadratic makes parabolas, either right side up or upside down. And then exponential is um, about changing something a certain percentage X number of times, uh, starting with a starting amount and then a final amount. Okay, so here we go. Through the test. On your marks, get sets, goes. Okay, we wanna make this a function and this not a function. So basically functions are one, to one. So for each input, there has to be one output. So I put uh, four here. These are just numbers I made up. It could be lots of different answers. And then I put one here. So if I say negative one, you know that it means four. If I say three, you know that it means negative eight. If I say six, you know that it means one. So it's one input, one output. So to kill this one and make it not a function, we put negative one here. And then you can put any numbers you want to over here. I, I do 7 and 2 just because. So if I say negative 1, you don't know if I mean negative 1, 7 or negative 1, negative 8. So that makes it not a function. But functions are one-to-one -one relationships. All right, let me make a little space right here. <laughs> so there's question 1 done. Okay, question 2. Um, basically... We're re relating in a linear fashion because it pretty much makes a line. So if you draw a line through here, the connection between um, the, the the rental and the distance from the center of town. So if you get farther away, that that goes down. So uh, this number right here, 1275 for the rent would be right in here. Well, that could be my starting point too if I were to draw my line a little closer. So forget that line. It's right there. So 12. 75 represents the starting point. So that would be no distance from the center of town would be up to 1275. And that's choice A. Estimates uh, the rent uh, from the center, at the center of town. All right. <clears throat> uh, number three, here's two parabolas. And what do you notice about this parabola? This one's been shifted up. Uh, basically the same shape, but it's just shifted up. So we say G of X is equal to F of X and then it's three higher because it moved up one, two, three spaces. So it's f of x plus three. That shifts it up three spaces. Okay, number four. Um, this would be exponential growth, and then we're going to use the we're going to use the formula that I showed you. Y is equal to a b to the x. 
um, it says we have this many what is it uh, bats population of bats so it's going to be y is equal to 270,000 and it's one two point nine percent so that's one point zero two nine that's my b so I'm, it's two pennies more almost three pennies more added to the dollar so it's one point zero two nine percent so it's one point zero two nine to the x power so that would be my um <clears throat> you just got to make a a create, a, a create an equation that models this situation. Okay, the next one, I'll get a little drink here. We're graphing this, and we're supposed to um, identify the x-intercepts and the minimum or maximum of the, of the function. So the first thing I would notice is I would say x squared plus 2x minus 3. I recognize this as factoring. So I would say that this factors into x and x and then negative 3. No, actually positive 3 and negative 1. So then if you set each, that's so this time, this foil, this times this makes this, this times this makes negative 1, 3. That makes negative 3. So negative, positive 3 and negative 3 make the 2 in the middle. Then we do 0 product proper t. So it's x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0. And then we get x is negative 3 and x is equal to 1. Okay, so these are the place, these are the zeros of the function, the x-intercepts. So one of them is at 1, the other one is at negative 3. Now halfway between the two is going to be where the vertex is. So you could do x is equal to negative b over 2a, that's the vertex point. So b is 2. So it would be negative 2 over 2 times 1. So it's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. But I knew that. Now if I put negative 1 back into the function, it would be negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. If you type this into the calculator exactly the way I wrote it, um, it will give you the right answer. But you have to make sure that you use the parentheses around the negative. But this is pretty easy, so I'm just saying that squared is 1 plus negative 2 minus 3. So that'd be negative 5 with one more would be negative 4. So negative 1 and then down 4 would be the vertex. 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's the parabola. Okay. So my x-intercepts are at 1, 0 and at negative 3, 0. And my vertex is at negative 1, comma, negative 4. Okay, negative 1, negative 4. So the minimum value is the y value. So the y value is the minimum of the function. So when it says the maximum or minimum of the function, you want the y value. So the minimum of the function um, I need to move this keyboard a little bit here. Minimum um, is negative 4 when x is negative 1. So the y value, the output of the function, is the minimum. Now if the parabola is upside down, it would be a maximum. Okay, um, this one here, we're supposed to figure out what happened. And the mistake is right here. They, negative 42 plus 4 is not, not 46, right? It should be negative 38. So negative 42 plus 4 is negative 38. Okay, so that's what should be right here instead of 46, should be negative 38. Now we're supposed to solve it. 24x minus six, 56 is equal to negative 6x minus 38. Okay, so how do you solve this? Well, you get the, the variables on one side, numbers on the other. I always move the smaller amount of the variable first. So I'm going to add over 6x. I get 30x minus 56 is equal to negative 38. I'm going to add 56 over. I get 30x is equal to, add those together, and it would be 56 minus 38, which would be 18. Then divide the 30 over. Don't freak out. Um, the answer is uh, a fraction. So it's 18 over 30. If you divide that on the calculator, you're going to get 0 uh,0.6. Or if you reduce the fraction, you get 9 over 15, which is the same thing as 3 out of 5. So it's 3 fifths 
or 18 thirtieths, or if you divided it, you would get 0 0.6. That's all of those would probably work. Okay, number seven. Okay, we're graphing and shading here. So um, these are two lines. This is a horizontal line, and this is going to be a slopey line. And then we're shading y is greater than, and then y is less than. Okay, and they're solid lines. If it's equal to, then it's solid lines. If it's not equal to, then it's dashed lines. So 5 is a horizontal line, 1, 2, 3, 5. Straight horizontal line like this. Okay, and it's greater than, so I shade above. Y is greater than, shade above. Then I graph this one here, which is a starting point of 3, 1, 2, 3, and the slope is 2 thirds. I go up 2 over 3. Okay, and there's my slope. And I'm going to shade y is less than, so I shade below on this one. So the answer is where the two things cross. So you shade above on one, below on the other. So the solution is actually this space right here. Now you have to use the computer and like drag and drop and stuff like that. But this is the general idea of what's going on. So there's my solution to this. All right, now we're going to solve the system of equations. Um, graphing this out, I tried graphing it and it didn't work so well. It's actually easier just to solve it. So if this is equal to y and this is equal to y, then these are equal to each other. Okay, so you have to solve the quadratic. So I'm going to move, get your quadratic set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract over the 3x. And I'm going to add over the 2. And then this factors. x and x, 1 and 2 minus and minus equals 0. So there are the factors. So when you set each factor equal to 0, um, you get x minus 1 equals 0, and you get x minus 2 equals 0. So you get x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 2. Now these go back into the original equation. I can put them right here. Put x in, and then square it and get y. So I have to do that to get the ordered pairs. So one of the equations was y is equal to x squared. So if I put 1 back in, 1 squared is 1. So uh, 1 comma 1 would be one of the solutions. Then if I put 2 in, 2 squared is 4. So 2, 4 is the other solution. So 1, 1 and 2, 4 are the two solutions to this. But basically, um, this is a parabola, right? And then you got a line. This is the line, and it goes like this, and it intersects at these two points, 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 4. It's really hard to see those on the calculator, so I, otherwise I'd say graph it and look for the intersection points. But it, it's pretty hard to see on the calculator unless you really manipulate it around. It was almost easier just to set your quadratic equal to zero and solve. Okay, um, the next one is a basically kind of like a probability problem. It says, um, given that no, that the states don't use, um, given that the states do not use nuclear power, so that means we can get rid of these states. They're gone because they do use nuclear power. So the ones that don't use nuclear power and then use coal, so it's yes and no, would be 20. So it's 20 states out of uh, these added together, which is 32. And you divide that on the calculator, you get 62 and one half percent. Well, you actually get 0. Um, 625, which you could also call 62.5%. So either either one of those would work. Okay, 10. This one here, um, kind of, kind of, we, we had a big discussion about this one with the math teachers. Basically, you're eliminating this point and this point, and you're trying to figure out what happens. Um, the average of the times don't change because you're, the whole average is 10 and everything adds up to 10 so that doesn't change but the, the uh, this average would change because you're getting rid of that so the average of the distances would definitely change the other one that def definitely changes is um, the range because the lowest is 1 and the highest was 11 so the range changes but that's those are the only two that change everything else stays the same between the two Okay, um, here, number 11, we're doing a scatter plot and we're trying to make a line go with it. So, 
I just kind of drew a line here the best I could. Just I went whack, like that. Woohoo! And my y intercept is about 15. Um, and so I'm looking between between 10 and and 20. And I went with I went with 20, I thought. And then the slope is tricky on this one because it's kind of up one and over two. But up one is only 10. So we're going up 10. Right? So up 10 and then over two. Well, going over two boxes is really just going over five. So the slope is two. Because you're going up 10 and over um, two boxes. But these two boxes only represent five because you're going from five to 10. So again, you go up, up 10, over two boxes, up 10, two boxes is worth five. So really the slope is two. It's the only one that makes sense is this one right here. That one was tricky because one box, so the slope's not a half, it's the slope is 10 over, over five. Okay, number 12. Um, so correlation of close to one is like really super strong. So there's a relationship, a strong relationship between the number of items purchased and the cost of the grocery bill. Thanks Hang on a second. Okay, so um, there was an announcement so I got in my video here. Um, so a correlation of close to one is really super high. And it makes sense. The more items you purchase, the, 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 the total cost of your grocery bill is going to go up, right? The more things you buy. So this is a strong correlation between the two. So that's D. Now hopefully you've kind of read through these and stuff because I'm just kind of buzzing through the answers and kind of giving you some insight into them. All right, this is FOIL. First, outside, inside, last. First, it would be 2x cubed. That's that. Outside would be 8x squared. Then inside would be 3x. And then last would be 12. So that would be D. Um, the next one. Okay, one buys. Oh, one buys peaches and grapefruit at the store. He writes the equation shown to model the relationship between the number of pounds peaches and the number of pounds for grapefruit. G buys. It says, what's the total number of pounds of peaches and grapefruit that he buys? Well. This is the number of pounds of the two, so the number total is 2.5 pounds. Uh, I, I guess that's all you do, because it just says to add those two together. Okay, the next one. Um, these ones that where you select all, these are kind of tricky uh, if you don't pay close attention. Uh, so this can be written as three times three, right? Or three uh, times three, or three squared. And this can be written as x squared squared. So that's one way to write um, this first thing and then y and then squared so that's that's the second choice here you can do that all right now it's definitely not this one and this one also works because if you square the squared you get four x to the fourth and then y squared and then the nine is not being squared so this one works as well too this one doesn't work because you're squaring the nine which would be 81 and then the other thing that this does is it factors into the difference of two perfect squares. So it would be um, the square root of this, which is 3x squared minus y, or plus if you want to do that first, and then 3x squared minus y. So the difference of two perfect squares is how this guy factors. Okay, the next one. Uh, this is an exponential growth problem. So it is y is equal to a, b to the x. Because it says it talks about doubling rabbits and stuff like that. So you remember your a is one in the preview. That's where you start. So it's 150 rabbits, and b uh, is your is your growth rate. And it says the rabbits double. So that's going to be two to the x power. And then we want to know when it reaches 4,800. So that's your stopping amount. So start, stop, rabbits doubling. So that would be choice D. Okay, uh, this factors, so we can factor it, or you could graph it on the calculator and see where it crosses the x-axis, because that's what you're looking for, the zeros of the function. Um, let, let's type it in and, and see where, you know, what, what makes it true. Um, so this is a parabola, 
We know that because it's squared. So we get 2x squared. And you'll have a graphing calculator when you do the actual test. And then minus 3. Um, and then I'm going to do zoom. Hit the zoom button here. And I'll choose number 4, zoom decimal. Or zoom standard is, works well too. And it appears that it crosses at 3, 1, 2, 3. Well, to check that out, we're going to hit the trace key. We're actually going to type in 0. No, not 0. We're going to try to type in 3 and then hit enter. And look, 3, 0. That's where it crosses. The other place it looks like it crosses is at negative a half. So I'm going to hit, I'm in the trace mode. I'm going to type in negative 0.5 and then hit enter. And sure enough, that's the other 0 of the function. So the two answers are negative 1 half or negative 0.5 and x equals 3. All right. Now, you could use the quadratic formula on this. You could, um, you know, it factors really easily. So we're going to put the 3 opposite here to make negative 6. And then plus 1, x in the middle. And then you set each factor equal to 0. So then you subtract 1 and divide. So you get x is negative 1 half. And then x is equal to 3 by adding the 3 over. All right, number 18. Um, this one here where we have answers. So we have x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 5. And so we're trying to create a quadratic that has those two solutions. So we, we add this over, we get x plus 3. We subtract this over, we get x minus 5. And that's a quadratic that would work. Um, I'm guessing they want it in standard form. So if they want it in standard form, then we would FOIL it out. So f of x is the function. This times this is x squared. So I'm doing my old FOIL. This times this is minus 5x. This times this is plus 3x. And this times this is negative 15. That's supposed to be a 5. It's a crappy 5. There, it's a better 5. So we get x squared minus, uh, borrow 5 from the ant, 3 from the ant uncle, or no, borrow 5 from the ant, pay her back 3, you still owe her 2. So there is in standard form, there is in factor form, and that creates the function. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a second. Got to get some water. And I'm back. All right, so number 19. Um, all the points that work. Okay, so if you plug in 0, then that would go away, and you just get the 3 quarters. So this is definitely in, so that's 1. And then um, through the process of elimination, you just got to plug them in and see if they work. This one down here also works. So it's 1 half times 1 half plus 3 quarters. Uh, half times a half is a fourth. And then a fourth and 3 quarters makes 1. So these two work. The rest of them don't. But you, I just put in x and then figure out y. All right, number 20. Uh, f of 12. What does this mean? It doesn't mean f times 12. It means put 12 in for x. So it's 2 thirds times 12 plus 3. So 2 thirds times 12. Um, well, the bottom of the fraction means to uh, divide. So it's 3 divided into 12 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. So it's 8 plus 3, which is 11. Or you can type in 2 thirds times 12 plus 3 on your calculator and get 11. All right. So this one here is, um, oh, let's see, what are we doing here? So we have a grasshopper and they jump off and we want to know uh, when do they hit the ground. So when they hit the ground, the height is zero. So we get negative uh, t squared plus four thirds t plus one fourth is equal to zero. Okay. Then um, you have to solve this quadratic and quadratics with fractions aren't the best. So I'm going to multiply. Um, I'm going to multiply all these parts by by negative 12. Uh, I don't know the you know if that's the best way to handle this. The quadratic formula um, with fractions is a little messy. We could try that. I'm not sure the the, the best way to do this uh, to help you get the right answer, but. Um, I'm going to go with this. First of all, 
I'm going, to multiply, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 12. How do I know that? Because I want to get rid of the negative, and I'm going to, um, if I count by threes and I count by fours, then I end up with um, 12 as my like a common denominator. So this times this would be 12t squared. Okay, so negative 12 times 4 thirds. Here, I'll use the calculator for that to show you that this is what's going on. So it's negative 12 times by 4 thirds, okay, is negative 16. So negative 16t. And then uh, 1 fourth of the tw negative 12 would be negative 3. All right. So this actually factors um, into 6 and 2 would be how it would factor. So, or you can use the quadratic formula. I'm going to factor it since I'm at this point. So it's going to be 6 and 2 instead of 4 and 3. And it's going to be plus 1 and negative 3. So this times this is 12t squared. That's negative 18. And then 2 more makes that. And then that times that's that. Okay. So we set each one equal to 0. t squared, 6t plus 1 is equal to 0. Um, subtract the 1 and divide by 6, so that would be t is equal to negative 1 6. Now this answer doesn't make any sense because that's negative time. So that's not the answer. The answer comes from over here. So 2t uh, minus 3 is equal to 0. Add the 3 over, so 2t is equal to 3, or t is equal to 3 over 2, which would be 1 and 1 half seconds which kind of makes sense because that would be like a grasshopper jumping and it take a second and a half later. All right, uh, you could try the quadratic formula, make a one and b uh, four thirds and c one fourth and see how it worked out for you. But you ignore, the main thing is you ignore the, the negative answer because it doesn't make sense in, in, in regards to the story problem. Okay, 22, um, this is an upside down parabola. I just, I just graphed it, I also thought about the, where the vertex was. So the vertex is at negative b over 2a. So it would be uh, negative 14 over 2 times 1, which would be uh, over negative 1 because that's a negative. So it's actually going to be at, at 14 over 2, which is 7. So 7 is the x coordinate of the vertex. So that's why they're asking what happens things. Is it increasing before 7? Is it increasing after 7? So 7 is, what is really important here. So I'm going to type this in. Um, so it's negative. Uh, I don't have a t, so I'm going to use x squared plus 14x and then minus 40. And I'm going to do zoom standard this time so I can see like zoom standard is like 10 in each direction. So hit zoom and standard, which is number six. So you can see seven right here. Seven is the, the top part. So you goes, it's increasing until you hit to seven. So between six and seven, yeah, it's definitely increasing on that interval. So yes, um, it's, it's decreasing on, from seven to eight. So that's not it. Now the average rate of change over this interval from six to eight. Well, six is going to be here and eight is going to be directly across from it. They're both the same height. So since they're both the same height, the average change of anything that's the same height on a function is going to be no change. So that one works as well. And then the rest of them are just silly, silly. So it's those two. Okay, 23. Um, you're supposed to turn this into a function, this uh, sequence. And basically, you can see that you're multiplying by 3 each time. So what we do is we have a starting number. This is kind of like exponential growth because you're multiplying by the same number and over and over again. So you have a starting point of 4, and then your change is 3. But the change doesn't happen to the very first term. It happens to the, it happens to the second term. So you don't do to the nth power, because if you put 1 in here, you're not going to get 4. So you've got to back the truck up one space, and it's going to be n minus 1. So it's four, 4 times 3 to the n minus 1 power. That's equal to f of n. 
So it's very important that n minus 1 backs, backs up your counting of the number of 3's. Because you don't multiply the first term by 3, you multiply the first term by 3 to get the second term. But you're just starting off with 4. So if you put 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 to the 0 power is 1. And then you just get 4. So that's the correct answer. All right. Um, fish in a pond. This is, this is exponential growth. So it's y is equal to a, b to the x. So you have f of x is your function notation. You have five fish in the pond, and they double, and it's to the x power. So that's the answer. 25. All the students know the exponents e, i, e, i, o. It's 8. Think of it as 8 to the 2 thirds, and then x to the third to the 2 thirds. So each thing has to be taken to the 2 thirds power. Now, when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you've got to multiply the exponents. So 2 thirds times 3 is just 2. So x squared is the answer. And that's the only one that's x squared. And then, um, and then you take the cube root of 8, which is 2, and then you square it to get 4. So it's 4x squared. So remember, it's all the students know the exponents. E, I, E, I, O. The top number is the exponent, and the bottom number is the index, right? So you take the cube root, and then you square it. Um, the next one is, you want to know, this is a whole thing about y equals mx plus b, and that's your starting amount, your, your, your fixed fee, and then it's 4.99 per pound, because x is the number of pounds. So you have a starting amount, and then 4.99 per pound. So that's your fixed rate, your fixed fee. So the answer is c. OK. Um, that's 26. Here's 27. Almost done. So there's tickets being sold here. There's 350 tickets, and then that's how much money you get. So X would be the uh, number of seats in the upper, no, the lower. The lower is the first thing that you run into. And then Y would be the number of seats in the upper so x plus y is equal to 350. So there's 350 total um, seats here. So the, the total number of seats is 350. Now this is the total amount of money that you get. So it's $35 for each x for the lower. So the lower are better, closer, right? Seats that are more expensive. And then $25 for each y for $10,250. Okay. Now, um, this is, you could do guess and check if it was multiple choice or whatever, but it's a um, situation where you got to solve it using maybe elimination or substitution, whichever you want. A lot of people like um, elimination. So if I multiply this by negative 25, then I'm going to get a new equation which will have a negative 25 in it. So negative 25 times this would be negative 25x. Negative 25 to this would be negative 25y. Whoops. And then 25 times that. So I got 350. Oops. Uh, 350 times 25 is equal to 8,000. So it's negative 8,750. That was done on the calculator. And now I'm going to take this away from the 10,000. 25, 2050, sorry. Okay, so what I did here is now these two equations can be added together. Okay, so here are the original two equations, and I multiply all of these by 25. Now, if I add these two equations together, I get 10x, and then this cancels out, which is why it's called the elimination method. And then that equals uh, the subtraction of these two, which would be 1500. Divide the 10 over, and x is 150. So there's 150 in the lower, which means the other one has to be 200, right? Because there's a total 350 in the upper. Ba-boom. OK, and then the last question is, this is in vertex form. This parabola is facing up. I know it's facing up, and the vertex is right 2 and up 3. So it's a 2 comma 3. So the minimum is the is the y value. The y value is always the minimum of the function. So the minimum is y is equal to 3. 
That's the minimum of the function. All right, so this was a brief explanation of these, plus I gave you a little overview of the things you need to compare in Algebra 1, the exponential, the exponential versus the linear versus the quadratic, okay? This video is almost 40 minutes long. Um, I did my best to get everything done in a short period of time. If you have any questions, stop by and see me. And if you're in, out there in the world uh, wide web, you can leave a comment and I will try and help you as best I can. All right.